Mika, you just mentioned Mariupol. Russian forces continue their siege of that port city. Amid growing concerns, the humanitarian crisis there is getting worse. Yesterday marked the eighth consecutive day of relentless attacks as trapped civilians struggle to find food and water. We want to go there now. We're joined by the deputy mayor of Mariupol, Sergei Orlov. Mr. Deputy Mayor, thank you so much for taking some time with us this morning. Give us your assessment of, if you would, of what's going on right now in your city. We've seen the images. The world has watched. What are you seeing on the ground? Uh, during all the night, we had continuous bombing, uh, airstrikes from uh, Russian uh, from Russian aircraft, and also shelling from artillery. And in the morning, uh, Russian army continues to uh, to move to Mariupol. So in some territory, we even have um, street battle street battles uh, on the on some part of our city and it's from military situation but ukrainian army and national guard still controls all all the city internally but from humanitarian side you saw the situation is awful uh yeah the the whole day yesterday russia bombed uh, our city and uh, a lot of a lot of destroyment a lot of victims uh, through civil uh, citizens in, in our city. We cannot even calculate how many. We know you need, Mr. Deputy Mayor, food, you need water, you need medicine for the people who've been injured in your city. Is any of that making it into Mariupol? Are those humanitarian convoys able to get those critical uh, elements of, your, of, of well-being to your people? You know, five or seven days before our citizen claim to uh, somehow to stop shelling, artillery bombing, but uh, today they are claiming to have some uh, some water and some food. Unfortunately, it's not absolutely possible to transfer some humanitarian goods because Russia totally blocked the city and does not allow to leave the city for any humanitarian or medical situation. Yesterday we had cases when about 100 of our citizens on private car try to leave uh, our city. They pass through Ukrainian checkpoint, and uh, in several kilometers there is a Russian checkpoint, and they start to sh to shell, to shoot from uh, armed weapon, uh, not directly to the car, but around to push them go back. So it's not absolutely possible to go to Mariupol and from Mariupol at the moment. The world was shocked by the images of a maternity and children's hospital being attacked from the sky by Russian forces. We saw pregnant women being carried out on stretchers, that hospital in your city. The Russian government said that there were Ukrainian soldiers being housed in there, and that's why they attacked it. Obviously, the images that we've all seen tell us a different story. What can you tell us about that hospital? Who actually was inside that building? You know, I yesterday read uh, a good sentence of Minister of Foreign Affairs of Latvia. He told that in the world we have lie, and we have big lie, and we have official information of Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So in this case, this situation is like this. So uh, this uh, we had in the center of our city uh, medical campus. Uh, there were maternity hospital, the children's hospital, and children's therapy. Uh, one of these buildings was destroyed, another one damaged. So we have uh, 17 injured and uh, injured people. It's mostly pregnant women and doctors, and three people unfortunately killed. Uh, one of them is a child girl. So I don't know mm. where they see battalion warriors, maybe pregnant women or children. It's uh, as all warriors. I don't know where they see this. It's truly appalling. You said a minute ago, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that Ukrainian forces still control the city, that Russia has not taken it over completely. How much longer do you believe that can hold based on what we're seeing in the streets right now? Uh, I'm absolutely sure that our army and National Guard will defeat the city up to the last ballot. I don't know, uh, is it possible for many days or for weeks? Uh, it's an issue of, of uh, battles, I don't know. I'm sure up to the last ballot, but you should understand that humanitarian situation decreases hour by hour, and we cannot defend 
our lives uh, from air uh, air strikes from air bombing they use unmanaged bombs up to one ton of tratil and they are completely destroying and flattening the city Sergey, uh, there was a moment in, in the past few days where Russian officials were trying to say that uh, the bombing of the maternity clinic didn't happen, uh, other things like this didn't happen, that it was lies. What do you want the world to know about the people of Mariupol and what is happening there? Uh, 16 days before, we were a peaceful country, peaceful city, and we were happy to live in Ukraine and still happy to live in Ukraine and to uh, be Ukrainian. Me personally, I am half ethnic Russian, half ethnic Ukrainian, so I can speak in Russian uh, without any limitation and without any damage for me, so it's absolutely possible. And we should know that last official numbers of uh, killed people in Mariupol, it was three days before, it was 1,207, just killed people on the street. So everyone in the world should realize that at least half of them are ethnic Russians. So uh, in Mariupol, Putin and his army just killing Russian. And that is the Russian world that they bring to Ukraine. Uh, I ask to support Ukraine to continue all that USA, EU, Great Britain do, and to continue the support and give us opportunity to protect our allies from the, after attacking from the air. Do you know how much of the city has been destroyed or taken, and, and how are you able to communicate with the people of your city? Uh, I think uh, most uh, of the city is destroyed. We have some district without any buildings, so all, all the buildings uh, received some damage. Uh, either they destroyed, either some damages they received, and the situation uh, comes worse and worse. And it's not possible to communicate to citizens because of there is no electricity and any utility in cellular phone for each day. It's only short messages and uh, conversation face to face. So it's very difficult to communicate to people. And is there any, if people wanted to leave, would, is there any way out? No way out, any way out. Russian troops do not allow even for humanitarian help, even children, even child, even women, adults, not allowed. They shoot with armed air uh, and uh, push to go back to Mariupol. Deputy Mayor of Mariupol, Sergei Orlov, thank you very much for sharing everything with us. We wish you the best of luck and hope to speak to you again soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.